Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Strain Echocardiography by Speckle Tracking and Tissue Doppler. Part 1. Technique. As we learn from concept of the strain, we have at least four types of the strain. Longitudinal, circumferential, radial, and rotational or twisting. Up to this time, uh, May 2019, almost all researchers come to this result that global longitudinal strain is one of the reliable and sensitive parameter for evaluation of the cardiac function in many situation and condition. And as you may notice, nowadays in many centers, strain echocardiography is part of the echo study. And I am sure after the uh, task force joining for standardization of those uh, uh, strain study, the factor and number, in a few years, this study, strain echo, will be a part, a constant part of the uh, echo study. And if we do it correctly and learn how to do that, we can do it in less than five minutes. As we learn, we can measure uh, strain in all those types global for uh, all of the left ventricular that we called it global like the global longitudinal strain global circumferential and so on or we can uh, calculate and measure strain in each wall or each segment that we called it segmental strain and this uh, presentation i am focusing more on the global longitudinal strain uh, but i mention others too not in detail <clears throat> for strain echo we can uh, do two way actually as i mentioned in concept of the strain three way but i am not going to talk about the third one here just only i talk how we do strain echocardiography by two techniques tissue doppler tdi and speckle tracking the first and most important part for uh, performing strain echo is having a right and correct image since we are going to uh, measure and evaluate global longitudinal we need three apical views, apical two, three, <coughs> sorry, and apical four. Our clips and images should have this, these uh, characters. First of all, the endocardium should be traceable during all cardiac activity, means during systole and diastole. The endocardium should be very clear and traceable by the machine. <clears throat> that is the most important part if we want to get correct strain echo result. <clears throat> Second, we have to set up for all those three uh, views the same setup, means the depth and width of the sector for all of them should be the same so the frame rate for all of them will be uh, the same too and the uh, optimal uh, frame rate for strain echo should be between 50 to 55 by, but based on the case of body habitus of patient if it's above 40 it is acceptable and we can do strain echo Another important factor for doing strain echo is having a good EKG that shows the prominent and clear QRS and T wave. So uh, if you need it, change your EKG lead and until you see uh, very clear QRS and T wave. 
and we have to record at least three R in our clips. In those cases that uh, we have very hard rate uh, or <coughs> a little irregular <coughs> like AP or tachycardia, uh, it's better we record <coughs> five bits. Another uh, factor for our images is heart moving during respiration. So it affects the tracing and the result is better we, when we are going to record our clips as the patient hold his or her breath. And the final thing is that I want to mention here is uh, using the, the type of the machine, especially when you are going to follow up the patient and in serial uh, strain echo, we want to see how much changes and how is the changes. For that matter, since the program, a software and the technique and calculation for strain echo between the vendor and even software are a little different, uh, the best way for follow up is always we have to use the same uh, vendor machine and better the same version of the machine because in version in each version maybe they change the software a little after we got all the uh, three apical views we go and start to perform strain echo first i'm going to talk about the strain echo in philips epic after we uh, got our three apical view, we go in the control panel archive and select each of them one by one or all those uh, three view. Here we see, we will see, uh, we know which view we wanted and then we select them. And then after selection, we go hit the ACMQ button in touching a screen control panel uh, that ACM stand for automated here automated cardiac motion quantification ACM when you hit the ACM on the left side of the monitor it show how many loops we have selected and the first one highlighted it asked below that which view is that we select the view and then machine automatically calculate uh, uh, must automatically put the ROI or region of the interest. If we are satisfied with our tracing, uh, ROI is completely corresponding with, with the ball motion, we uh, hit the accept and the machine start uh, analyzing and save and we then hit the acquire bottom and the control panel. Then we go for the next loop. Here is, for example, apical to then we select, as you notice here, is completely tracing at, uh, by machine is off, completely off. That is the reason uh, the is not very clear, too much noisy. Anyway, when it's uh, off, uh, the trace is off, we have two options. First, we go, we can do edit and then we go fix our uh, uh, ROI and adjust that one that I'm going to in, in a moment uh, say how we do that or no we go and draw ourselves uh, for the ROI for that matter we need to set three points first two basal point that should be about the mitral valve annulus exactly about the mitral valve annulus to uh, and this third one at the apex. When we hit the machine, start analyzing and show our strain in that view. And if we are satisfied with the tracing and movement of the ROI, it corresponds with the myocardium, then we hit accept, accept, and then we go for the uh, and then I acquire that one and then we go for the third loop uh, or third uh, clips. Here is apical 3 and then again we select the view apical 3 
and then machine trace the area and we check the ROI how it uh, match with the walls if it's not for here how we adjust it we click uh, edit and then we here we have we uh, click the one moment please we for the uh, for the adjusting the ROI we go hold the left uh, or right key next to the trackball and then with moving the trackball to that area we want to adjust and it become highlight then we move it left right up down and all those changes we need it here as you see that's when we go the hand become highlighted at that spot and then we move anywhere that we want each segment separately or even the inner border or outer border of the all ROI when we are satisfied with adjusting and we see here is not uh, completely adjust and doesn't follow with the posterior wall so this strain for the apical tree will not be correct after we finishing all this uh, tree we go uh, hit the global result and global result is show, show us the uh, bull's eyes plot and so all segments their strain peak strain and with the color change too Here we have a nice uh, setup for ROI. Here, apical tree. As you notice, the ROI each segment correspond movement correspond to the myocardium movement and completely ROI trace endocardium during all cardiac cycle. The only problem here is. Uh, the, the basal posterior you will see a little in if you can adjust it this part and a little move to the lateral it will be much better more correct and if you notice here at the apical uh, tree the point of this set point for the IVS is a little beyond the LVOT in, as a general rule depending of the thickness of the IVS myocardium at this spot uh, we have to put the uh, this point half to one centimeter above the aortic valve ring not the exactly at the ring half centimeter to one centimeter distal to the aortic valve ring another important things as I mentioned in concept is not only depict the quality uh, 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 not the, uh, the number and pick of the stra uh, strain the timing of the pick of a strain is important too here we have this rectangle show this ejection time and exactly at the at peak of the strain show at uh, relationship with the aortic valve closing time that end of the T so only you will see a little all of them almost synchronized at the same time at the maximum systolic time uh, they got to the peak of strain here we have apical 2 again uh, we our uh, roi completely adjust with the wall and move very uh, nice with together and the only uh, and the ba basal set is exactly above the mitral valve honor loose and only a little if we can uh, pull the this part a little lateral will be much better and more accurate and again here we have a strain curve for each of those segments that uh, show with the different color and dot dotted line is the global uh, strain and this uh, view apical 2 here we have apical 4 
again we have a nice set for the ROI and a little maybe here we can move it this part a little to the right at tip of the peak if you are, you are not sure uh, exactly which spot go back to uh, to the image and see and find exactly where is the tip of the uh, apex and then adjust your uh, ROI and again we have here the strain curve here we have uh, another uh, bull's eyes plot that in different machine show as you notice instead of the 17 segment this software and vendor uh, like to uh, you know, display 18 segments and another uh, factor that you will see in notice in this plot is the endo the word of endo here is mentioned what does mean endo i explained to the concept of the strain and please check it out what does mean another important uh, function we have to do during uh, for strain echo is determine an input avc time or the back closing time all machines and vendor they take end of the t that frame as a time of aortic valve closing so uh, if here at the apical 2 you will notice the machine ask enter avc time if we don't change anything we just enter on that and adjust our uh, roi when we enter accept automatically machine take that uh, moment end of the t for AVC time and for in the G at the first at the apical tree it show when we trace it the apical tree it's uh, at the end it show this image and give us that I am taking this moment for aortic valve if it's uh, right you will see aortic valve closed so we just hit uh, enter or okay if not, we have to go with the frame to frame back and forth and find out exactly uh, which spot is closing AVC, uh, aortic valve closing time, and then we select that moment as a AVC time. Or in those cases that the aortic valve is not uh, correspond with the EKG uh, at the end of T, like when we have LBB, left on the brush block, or the patient has aortic valve replacement and is not very clear we want you want to make sure that uh, our avc time is correct the best way is we go for the aortic valve doppler and find the closing aortic valve in this click and correspond exactly what the, which part of the ekg exactly avc time is and we then we go back to the our strain echo and select that moment for short access strain study including circumferential radial and uh, rotational strain we need to uh, get three view at three level for in the short access as notice here machine show us short axis at the mid at the base and at the apex so we have to get three view on short axis at the mid basal and apical here just we select one and so the machine show one loop we has been selected then we select the what view is that when you selected the machine trace that uh, left ventricular just again the same way we hold in the left key of the trackball uh, and then uh, with the trackball moving trackball we can adjust adjust the uh, ROI here we have three way to adjust one inner limit just we hold at uh, highlight hand show up and just we trackball we move it make it less or more or outer uh, border the same way we can change and or 
at the line, each segment closed, or at the center of one of the segments, we hold it, hand become highlight, and we twist it, and we should correspond each segment with the real 2D segments, as you noticed, is those abbreviations for each segment. When we adjust everything uh, correctly, all segment, board, outer border, inner border, and uh, segments uh, correctly, then we hit the commute. Just a moment. <coughs> we hit the commute and wait a few seconds. Machine start analyzing. Here, as you will note, here is uh, analyzing until finished. Then uh, it show our strain in that view. If you are satisfied with our tracing and correspond, that in this case, no, is completely off. It is tracing at this septum, out of the septum. So if you are, this will go again, adjust it. At the final, when we are satisfied with adjustment and strain, then we click accept and then save it. And then we go for the next layer uh, level, uh, whatever remain the other two uh, level. And then we go for hitting global result and finally give us uh, all those three uh, strain in the short axis as you notice here we just needed hit one of those three this is circumferential radial and rotational so when we finish all those uh, three level uh, we can hit each of them and the machine show those result for each of those For tissue doctor strain echo on the Philips, the protocol and the technique almost is the same. Uh, only instead of the 2D image in apical uh, view, we needed tissue doppler apical views. So we get the, all those three apical uh, views, the tissue doppler, when we save it, then we go hit the ACM queue and uh, machine give us three, depending on how the machine has been set it up, three or two for each wall uh, uh, ROI. Then we adjust uh, the direction of the each segment movement with those ROI, uh, the length and the direction, this arrow show it just with moving this one uh, to the right or this one to the left and size and even the length. We adjust those ROI for each segment and then uh, we finally we get result that is color emote or by the curve like velocity curve ch changes, distance changes or strain or stray rate it show us all those results here for comparison i show two uh, in the color m mode on the strain rate in the tdi or tissue doppler and speckle tracking the differences between them is obvious you, you can see in tdi is more sensitive to detail and at event timing even uh, is more sensitive compared to the Speckle tracking, tracking, speckle tracking is more smooth and uh, is not too much sensitive to uh, timing of event. How we can read it, this uh, color and mode strain? First of all, we have to go color box on the left side. We will see if it's stretching. If it's the stretching, show positive or blue means, uh, in other words, maybe if we, that part, that segment is, has dyskinesia or stretching become longer during contraction, uh, it show as a blue or green to blue. If it's uh, contraction and become shortening, it negative shift, it show yellow to red. So, 
as I mentioned, the, the only not the number of the strain, the amount of the strain important, the timing of the strain is important too. Here we have EKG and this color uh, plot show apex is top and base is down. So this is mid segment, apical segment and basal segment. In the, this part, as you notice, correspond with the systole, at the early systole. This apical and mid-segment has positive shift. In other words, it is stretching, become elongated. So at systolic, we have some kind of dys, uh, dyskinesia at the apical and mid-segment, but basal segment has contraction and the correct strain at the here at the mid systolic we have kind of green uh, gr uh, green and yellow so we have almost hypokinesi or akinesi at this part is is including a part of the apical and mid segment but the basal has right and maximum uh, uh, strain or contraction and uh, last at the after aortic valve closing at this red spot that on EKG show here exactly at this area this is post AVC uh, time so we have post systolic shortening so we have a little delay but the amount of the strain is almost normal the only difference is the timing the timing that two segment uh, goes to the peak after systole here is the same for the speckle tracking just smoother as if you notice here we even we can appreciate the e prime the correspond with e prime and a prime here here is the same almost e prime and a prime Now let's go uh, see how we do strain echo on GEV width. For, uh, it's the same uh, first when we got all those three apical view. We go and start uh, with the apical tree. Why? Because we want to enter the AVC time too. So we start with apical tree. It's better. We select first. We select apical tree then when we uh, select we go and hit the measure bottom and in control panel when we hit the measure uh, bottom on the monitor uh, it a drop down menu show up here uh, the drop down menu show up and then we go select afi automated function imaging when we hit that one, another drop down uh, uh, menu show up, show which uh, view you have it. You select that view here, for example, apical plaques. So we hit that one and the machine give you uh, three spots for setting those uh, for ROI. You select the basal for both and then last one you put at the apex and you hit the OK, then uh, if you need it, you can adjust those uh, ROI. When you adjust completely, then we hit the OK, approve. If and it show you straight. If you are not satisfied, you don't see corresponding and movement or ROI is not the same as the myocardium. You go to the touch screen control panel and hit the recal. On the Philips, we hit the edit. On the G, we hit the recal on the touch screen control panel. Then it machine give us the freezing uh, image, and then we have option exactly the same with the trackball and uh, control key uh, or set key. We adjust. Then we hit the OK, and then. If uh, it show us and now if we are uh, okay and uh, satisfied with our tracing, we hit the approved. Then machine uh, show us three apical uh, at the time of AVC. 
if we are uh, agree with that uh, time for ABC time we just hit enter and the machine show us the result of the stray in that view uh, it show in the four panel uh, one of them is dynamic movement the color changing the uh, bottom one is is segment uh, the number of the peak uh, strain right is here strain uh, curve and the color and mode of strain when we, we do and repeat this for other apical 2 and apical 4 and finally it uh, give us when we finish the last one the machine show us the uh, final result in the uh, this pattern and uh, bull's eyes here is another format of displaying the different machine uh, that show here uh, strain rate curve show strain curve for the uh, this panel the number and the color and mode of the strain if you notice here each uh, segment has their specific color here yellow belong to this basal inferior green and all the way to the end so you know this part is belong to this segment this part belong to this and so on now let's go see one of the most important pitfalls and mistake that can happen during a strain echo the first the first and most important uh, mistake is wrong setting point when we put in the wrong way as you see here this uh, trace completely include uh, lvot and the the set point is at the aortic valve link level so that is wrong and in underestimates uh, at least not only this uh, strain of this segment but uh, all of the global two and other segments the, so the best way is we move it a little and don't include the lvot wall another one here again the same problem we have for set point this part as you notice is too much and inside of the left uh, interatrial septum so we have to move it to the uh, exactly above the mitral valve annulus and you will see how much differences between those strain uh, global and segmental another one we have to be aware of the uh, those structure that mimic uh, myocardium here for example we have uh, Papillary muscle, the machine cached as automate automatically cached that one as a myocardium. That is not right, so we are go and adjust our ROI. Another important uh, factor uh, that has a lot of effect on our result is the width of the ROI and length of the ROI. In other words, the apical point of the ROI where it should be and how much the tick of the ROI should be. Here, for example, just without changing any uh, set point for the basal and the width of the ROI, we just move a little more to the apex, uh, almost include the pericardium that is wrong. Uh, you will notice from the almost normal global strain it goes to the almost uh, not almost is abnormal uh, strain so it's very important don't include uh, the pericardium at the apex and uh, be careful to this setup point the, for the width of the ROI there is a general rules we have to uh, set our ROI width based on the average of the myocardium thickness as you know the myocardium thickness at the basal and the apex is thin at the septum at the mid and the mid lateral is a little thicker because of the corda tendini papillary muscle all those character and the shape of the heart the best uh, average 
myocardium thickness is mid septal or mid uh, apical lateral these two part almost represent average of myocardium uh, thickness so we select those spot for setting up our ROI width let's see here what happened when we have not correct ROI width here we have a patient with uh, septal hypertrophy uh, that you can see hyperecho thickening on the septum at the mid or almost the basal uh, segment on the MRI we will see completely scar tissue and the tissue and this at this vendor the strain on the mid uh, septal and basal septal is minus eight and minus six and the width almost is average of the myocardium width of the ROI but in other vendor uh, we have three type of the three size of the ROI here we have too much tin and it show strain minus at the mid segment minus 17 it's close to the normal but it's not completely accurate it means there is some activity but it's wrong so uh, or here is minus 25 if we make it too much big again it show uh, hyper uh, overestimating the, the better and correct one is this one that almost these two correspond with each other almost and but even they are uh, they set up the same but still you will see a differences between these two number in all those segments that is the re one of the reason we have to follow, follow up we have to use the same vendor uh, for the follow-up strain echo here is another example of the effect of the width of uh, ROI or to our result as you notice at the top is too much narrow and the uh, fraction uh, strain rates you will see strain is a lot over 90 here that is usually around 40 to 50 here is very uh, we are overestimating but the correct way that we include my, all myocardium endocardium to the myocardium epicardium here it will be more uh, sensible uh, number here is uh, another display uh, and the vendor uh, for the strain the reason I brought this one is the word of endo as we notice here endo as we know and i talked in concept of the strain echo we have three layer of myocardium endocardial layer mid layer and epicardial layer those machine each of the vendor use different of those layer uh, for the measuring global strain so that is mandatory they each uh, uh, vendor should mention exactly which spot they use for measuring global strain so here it say this machine use endo this line endo for the uh, measuring global longitudinal strain another problem with the speckle uh, tracking strain echo is the program the the function of the program the way they program and the software and smoothing artifact on this apical 2 or apical 4 i am not sure as you noticed the machine even there isn't any in these two uh, lateral walls there isn't any tissue and only uh, is tracing the uh, space but a uh, machine based on this part the basal segment assumption give this uh, give a calculate some strain on the places we don't have any uh, myocardium so always be aware and correspond the ROI movement and dynamic of the movement 
with the real one and if it's not don't bother yourself to do a strain echo on that uh, view another problem is uh, curvature artifact here you have uh, apical 2 view as you notice this apical 2 view is off axis or foreshortening because apex move too much so we are foreshortening but we don't care about right now here if you notice in the basal inferior uh, segment is not only thin is akinetic so we have uh, on the bit I we can say 100% this basal inferior is akinetic and teeny so old infarction on the speckle tracking for catching that problem they, we put it here a little far not here because the angle as we know uh, in the tissue doppler tissue doppler uh, is the angle dependent so if we put the sample in or ROI at this level it become angle too much with the insonation so we cannot calculate for the, that matter the tech put it here a little end of this segment so make it almost parallel to the insonation that and can record it there is some dyskinesia or akinesi actual akinesi because it's zero akinesi a little kinetic or strain at the basal but if we go for the speckle tracking in the same uh, patient here as you see the machine show there isn't anything abnormality in this uh, segment and even if you notice here in the color M mode is even as a little strain decrease but still we have a strain close to the normal here at the mid and apical is completely normal but still almost we have minus 12 strain so is is kind of hypokinetic shows but we will show it this is completely akinetic and thin there are many reasons for that first of all for ROI, unfortunately, ROI, uh, when we set ROI width, it goes to all of the segment. So we cannot change the segment, uh, the width of the ROI for each segment. When we select for one of them, it goes for all of them. So that is one problem. Another problem is curvature artifact. At this uh, level, uh, basal uh, segment, the angle of this segment is too much this one and beside of the far field lateral poor poor far field lateral resolution in the speckle tracking both of those uh, or uh, all those three uh, element and factor effect for evaluation of this segment and show uh, false result so uh, curvature artifact poor far poor uh, far lateral resolution on the speckle tracking and the constant the width of the ROI all these three factors affect this false result in opposite way in another one here we have the same problem this uh, apical tree has uh, based on the eyeball guessing it has very good contraction and thickening and we don't have any problem except here is a little wrong the basal a little to the at the IBS so basal set point is to, uh, at the aortic valve ring forget about that but the other wall are correct and moving and contraction and thickening is normal but the in the speckle tracking here as you notice it show us at this yellow this yellow curve on the strain we have kind of the stretching or this kinesia at the system so the speckle tracking in this part has uh, abnormal but we will see there isn't such abnormality on that segment
or in the even in the color M mode you will see at the basal here we don't we have uh, stretching and not uh, positive uh, I mean uh, not uh, contraction here but the other segment are normal that is uh, the reason I brought uh, these two clips that always when you do a straight echo and you want to read it keep in your mind this problem for far field uh, regional wall motion and the result and almost always correspond the your result with your eye and movement of the wall and make sure they are matched together I hope you like this uh, presentation and if you thought it was useful please be generous not stingy and share it.